the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what law, taken by flesh, could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to deal with sin, condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who live accordingly to the spirits set in their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death. To set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, for those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Word of the Lord. So this is part two from part one last week. Last week we spent a lot of time talking about the law, talking about rules, talking about our sin, and spending the week thinking about how we fall short of what God has for us. And, and talking about how that's not a place we can stay forever, but it's a place that can be helpful for us to do as followers of Christ, to just take some time and truly, truly reflect, truly pay attention to those things. So I got to thinking about this week and how to talk about what I think the the for me is the the money quote from Romans 8, these first 11 verses. For, there, for now, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How do we talk about that? And I got to thinking about social media. I got to thinking about how it seems like that is so new. But the reality is, it's been around for a long time. In fact, there are people in our congregation who are younger than Facebook. There are people for whom we have always had instant communication with one another. We have always shared pictures of our lives, not by taking the picture with a camera, taking the film to, whoa, how fast is this, one hour photo, so that night we can look at the pictures. No, there are people listening to this sermon for whom their entire lives, they have been able to take a picture, instantly see it, and post it for people all over the world, literally, to be able to see. Facebook, Instagram, even Snapchat, for those of you who think it just disappears after a while, is forever. Once you put it on the internet, it's there. And we see that reality in our world today. If you posted something 15 years ago on Twitter, on Facebook, and Maybe it wasn't the best thing to be said. It could, and it probably will, come back to haunt you. I've often said, 
I'm glad that Facebook and Instagram and things like that have come, come about in the second half of my life, not in the first half. Because if we're honest, those of us who are in the middle third or the, the last third of life, we, we will say, boy, I'm glad that nobody can see what I was up to when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, because it's not on Facebook. I am glad I lived pre-Facebook as a teenager, because Facebook is forever. But for re the reality is, that's the way the world, the flesh, Paul would call it, treats us. Once you make a mistake, once you don't do it right, once you use the wrong word, or once you follow the wrong political persuasion as seen by hindsight 15 or 20 or 30 or more years later, you were always defined by that. That is always what will say that's who you are. If, God forbid, you find yourself transgressing the law and going to jail or prison, there's a good chance that will identify you for the rest of your life, according to the world. You'll always be a convicted felon, or you'll always be someone who spent time in jail because of a drunken brawl at the bar in your 20s, or whatever it is. The flesh, the world, defines us by our mistakes. We define ourselves by our mistakes, quite frankly. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not completely abnormal about this, is that when I start doing a, you know, thinking about my past life, yeah, I'll think about the good things. But you know what? It's always those places where I didn't get it quite right that jump up and ruin the entire memory. And then I want to just focus on that and say, oh, what a horrible, awful person I am. Man, if I could go back and do that differently, because, man, I really messed that up. Or I didn't, I didn't take that chance when I should have. Or I should have made a different decision and stayed in this place and not gone to this one. Or whatever it is. Even ourselves. We want to define ourselves by where we fall short. By our mistakes. So now, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That is the promise of life in Christ. That is the, that is the counterweight to what we talked about last week, about focusing on those places where we need to work on our lives. It, this, this reorients us from looking back at all of the wrong, at all of the bad, at all of the ways in which we just completely messed it up and reorients ourself, ourselves into the future. Because the reality is, we can look back at the past. We can look back at the past and look at our mistakes and, and, and focus on those mistakes but if, if we don't take those places and use them as a way to be able to learn better for the future, all we do is get stuck. We get stuck in bondage to our sin and, quite frankly, in bondage to death. Because when all we do is define ourselves by where we've messed up, we make that our God. We make that what we worship, what we pay attention to. And we stay there. And we freeze. And, and 
quite frankly, I think, when we're going forward into a future where all we're thinking about is don't mess up, we're not going to do anything. So we may or may not have an NFL season this, this fall. And I'm sure for Seahawks fans, that's going to kill you guys because that's your entire life from like August until January, right? That's what we do around here. Talk about the Seahawks. What are the Seahawks doing? Think about, think about football, whether it's the Seahawks or another team. Think about when they've had a big lead. Seattle's had a big lead going into the fourth quarter. And then they get into the dreaded prevent defense, right? We're not going to let anything behind us. We're going to do whatever we can to not make a mistake. And what usually happens to teams that do that? They usually lose. Why? Because they're playing not to lose. They're playing to not make a mistake. And quite frankly, that's what the world wants us to do. The world wants us, the flesh, as Paul calls it, the world wants us to play to not make mistakes. Because if we're not making mistakes, if we're playing to not make mistakes, if we're, if we're living life so that we don't do anything wrong, are we really living? And are we really living the full life that Christ is calling us to? You know, just look at Jesus' life, right? His disciples plucked grain on the Sabbath, and the rule followers were upset with them. Because look, your disciples are picking grain on the Sabbath. How dare they? Jesus is like, well, look. They're hungry. And besides, it's happened before. David's men did it. Or when Jesus heals on the Sabbath. And the rule followers are like, you can't be doing that on the Sabbath. That's work. And Jesus is like, well, geez. If... If one of your animals falls into a pit on the Sabbath, you're going to go get it out. Why? Because the animal is money for you and food for you. Well, God cares for human beings. Why wouldn't I heal on the Sabbath? Why wouldn't this be the moment for me to be able to give life to this person as a withered hand or as blind or whatever it is? This reality that there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus means that we are freed from the world's bondage to our mistakes to live freely into the future that Christ has for us. Knowing full well that what we talked about last week is completely correct. We are not always going to get it right. We are going to fall short, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is the reality that we know to be true. But the, this reality is also true, that we are not defined by those places we fall short. We are defined by the one who calls and claims us, this one we call Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't live life avoiding mistakes. We live life fully in Christ, knowing this truth of no condemnation, knowing that we are set free from bondage to sin and death, and yes, our mistakes, and yes, our missteps. We are not defined by Facebook, by Instagram, by our tweets, by any of that. We are defined by whose we are, by Jesus Christ. Go and live fully in the reality of your freedom from that bondage to sin and death.